Hi, I'm Justin Frick. I'd like to welcome you and Avixa to AV Chicago. Cable is the backbone of our industry and live events because without cables, you don't have a show. Some of the cables we'll be discussing today uh, include coaxial cables for video distribution, such as SDI over BNC, uh, antenna cabling, uh, data transmission cable uh, of a uh, category cable, uh, Cat5, Cat6. Uh, we'll be looking at some fiber optic cable, uh, as well as some analog signal distribution for audio and power distribution. So cable is basically uh, a number of wires or conductors insulated independently under one jacket, uh, sometimes shielded, for the purposes of transmitting power or data. Best practices in cable handling, storage, and maintenance are a surefire way to make sure that your events go off without a hitch and you can continue to utilize your investment for years to come. First off is coaxial cable. Coaxial cable is often used for transmitting video, RF, and other high bandwidth information. Second is unshielded twisted pair. Commonly used for high-speed data transmission as well as proprietary signal transport schemes. You can see this used most often as CAT5 or CAT6 cable often used for network data transmission, uh, LED video wall signals, etc. Third is shielded twisted pair cable, which is most commonly used to transmit audio and other low-speed data. Fiber optic cable is most often used for transmitting data and very high bandwidth information over long distances. And finally we have high current capacity multi-conductor unshielded cable used most often for power and for speaker. One of the important things to talk about here is pulling cable. Uh, most often we talk about pulling cable, that's whenever we're pulling it up after a show has ended. Uh, very important always to make sure that everything is disconnected so you don't go pulling a cable that's connected to a uh, piece of equipment, uh, potentially damaging the cable or the equipment that's attached. This is a very common concern when you're dealing with fiber optic cable, right? Fiber optic cable has very sensitive, very uh, delicate ends, and this is why it's very important to use proper strain relief and covers. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about bend radius. You know, bend radius has been a problem as discussed in fiber optic cable for a long time. While it's improved drastically in recent years, it's still a consideration. You know, you never want to bend a cable too sharply because the more you do that, the more fatigue you cause the rubber and the cable, and you risk damaging and shorting the cable. So you never really want to bend your cable any sharper than this. So next we'll talk about signal crosstalk. Uh, and this can be a, a real problem if you have a lot of cables bundled together. Um, most often you receive problems whenever you have uh, a, a high current power cable uh, run alongside an analog audio cable. This is a very common problem and it's often recommended to not run these cl in close proximity parallel to each other. Fiber optic cable uh, one of its advantages is that it's not very susceptible to crosstalk issues and can often be run alongside power without receiving interference. Shielding helps to prevent crosstalk and noise, but it can't always prevent all of it. So best practices are always to keep separation. So next let's talk about cable labeling. There are a lot of reasons to label your cables. Cable identification, so you know what cable is yours when it comes time to load out. Barcoding for inventory control, color coding for identifying type and length, and of course, most importantly, to know which end is which when you're in the field. It's my recommendation to always start out with the cable before it is unwrapped, label it with a piece of identifying tape, whatever your code may be, by color, by name, letter, number, it doesn't matter, so long as every cable that's being used has a unique identifier. This way, in any situation where you need to repatch, there's not a question of which was which. So here's an example of using color coding banding to identify two very similar looking cables, but have different numbers of conductors and different gauges. It's important that you use high quality materials when you're labeling your cables with your name or any barcodes or identifying marks. 
uh, you don't want that stuff coming off because if you have a serialized inventory and you have cable that comes home without labels, it wreaks havoc on your inventory system. So one of the keys to cable management is good organization. And there's no better ways to keep your cables organized and wrapped the way you wrap them than cable ties, right? A uh, few different ways to do this. We're not talking about cable ties like zip ties. Never a good idea. We don't zip tie cables. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see tie line used where it is tied off around one end of the cable and used just to uh, wrap it together. This is really good for larger bundles of cable, uh, larger, heavier cable. Uh, helps to maintain it well. It's cheap and there's always extra tie line on site. Here's one of the downsides of using tie line to secure your cable. Um, it leaves you having to hold all of this cable straight while you tie a nice, pretty little bow. And that can often end up tangled up in a knot or uh, coming apart on you as you're transporting it. Uh, one other note, I personally prefer to keep any kind of Velcro or wrap on the male end of a cable for consistency's sake. Also, that typically keeps it away from the user. Uh, so for example, on a microphone, you don't want your cable wrap hanging right off of your microphone. You're gonna want that cable wrap on the mixer side or a power cable you want on the male wall plug so it's not sticking to carpet. I personally prefer Velcro wraps because you can bundle your cable very quickly and efficiently. So when you have a number of cables that you always run together, sometimes it makes sense to bundle them. Here's an example of using a product called TechFlex. The only downside of this is mud and dirt. These can get awfully dirty if they're used in an outdoor environment. When bundling, we never use zip ties. Zip ties can damage your cable and can break very easily, causing a mess in your bundle. Another good option for bundling is good old fashioned electrical tape. Your cabling says a lot about you. It tells the world what kind of person you are. Uh, when you have a number of people running cable all over the place of different types to different destinations, it's very easy for excess piles of cable to build up backstage, making a big, ugly spaghetti mess. We've all seen it. We've all laughed at it. Don't be that person. This shows your team, freelancers, your clients, and the world how you care about your work. Now on to the dirty part of the job, taping. So, I always like to leave all of my slack on the den that I have my device, like a speaker, a lighting stand, a microphone, and make my connection end with just a little bit of excess, right? We're gonna pretend here. So we'll put it here. What I like to do, I like to use three inch tape. It's perfect for taping a single cable. I always start with a nice clean tape on one side. Go across. At the shortest point, that's not in a high traffic area. Sometimes it's worth going longer if it's lower traffic, but it's something you need to analyze in every situation. I like to pull it nice and tight and secure it. Since I'm a lefty, I'll start on this side. And come back, taping tape on top of tape. Go about an arm's length, put my thumb in the center of the tape on the center of the cable, and then do the old Vulcan sign here, back across the cable, so the cable stays right in the center. Once I reach this side, tear my tape, and there you are. Might I add, this is about as far as I would want to go without a supporting piece of tape in the middle to keep your cable tracking along straight. On site, it's important to protect your cables. All kinds of bad things can happen to cables laying unprotected. I highly recommend in high traffic areas that you use cable ramps. There are dropover styles and multi-channel versions like this, which I'm sure you're very familiar. This will accept cables of all diameters and allow you to even separate troughs by cable type and department, as well as you can use this to separate power cables from other cables that may be more susceptible to crosstalk and noise. Once this is complete, 
close the lid, your cables are safe, and so are your attendees. So when you're starting out with a properly rolled cable, you'll notice that the rings are pretty close to even, and you can clearly see that one connector is on one side and one is on the other. This is important to not get pretzels. So, simply loosen your Velcro, give it a toss. Now, if you're rewrapping a cable, it's always best to throw that cable out as long and straight as you can because a pile of cable can be very hard to wrap back up together. It just doesn't want to lay right. So, over under is the method. Let me show you how to not wrap a cable. You ever seen somebody do this? Yeah. What'd you think of them? Me too. Uh, it's not a rope, folks. This is a surefire way to damage your cables. So let me show you the right way to do this. The over-under method. You'll notice here, as I go over and rewrap and over and wrap, I get a nice clean lay. Now I'm doing that by simply taking the cable, looping it onto itself, going down and opening my hand in the opposite direction and looping it. See, this is what happens if you don't stretch the cable far enough out. So you'll need to shake it out, otherwise you'll have a hard time getting your cable to lay in a nice, neat circle. One thing you can do to make sure that your loops are the same length is measure by your arm distance. The longer you reach, the bigger your loops. The shorter you reach, the shorter your loops. Okay, so now we're going to talk about wrapping larger diameter cable. Now, it's a lot easier to do this on the floor. I often start out holding one end with my foot, then determine how large I'd like my circle to be. Most often this is determined by the length of cable or the case you're keeping it in. So I've made my over, now I'm going to pull for my under, just like so. So again, I'll take this hand, make the loop, now I'll use two hands, one to lift, one to place underneath. And on and on it goes until you have a nice, neat, proper bundle. Now sometimes the Velcro doesn't quite stretch and this time is one. So it's worth making the circle a little bit smaller so you can actually get both heads in close proximity to the wrap. That's going to keep them from banging around and getting damaged in storage and in transport. And now for everyone's favorite part, feeder. When you're coiling feeder, audio snakes, any other large unwieldy cable, the best way to do it is to live it in a large trunk like this. And the best way to utilize the storage space in the trunk is to use what we call the figure eight method. First, you'll want to start with a bit of excess on one end at the bottom of the case. This will allow you to make connections without having to unload all of the cable within the case. So once you have wrapped your cable or loom into your case in the figure eight method, take the last of it, drop it in, and fold over the rest. Once it's all wrapped up, you're ready for the next gig. Thanks for joining us today. I hope this has been helpful in teaching you how best to manage and maintain your cables. And just remember, always keep them clean and organized. It says a lot about you. That's a wrap.